start off with Legend LLC. Legend, is that correct? Legend. And we have Patrick Gallagher here today uh, to tell us all about his company. So come on up, Patrick. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Sir, the back. It's a hostile crowd. No hostile. Yeah. I think, does this work? Sure. Yeah. Can you guys hear me without? Is that okay? I'll talk like that. Yeah, kind of did. Is this better? It's better. It's better. You got it. Sounds good. Uh, anyway, I appreciate everybody you know, giving me their time this morning. Uh, again, I'll try and rattle through this uh, as coherently as possible because I haven't had a coffee yet this morning as well. Uh, but my name is Patrick Gallagher. I'm the founder and uh, CEO of the Legend Travel app. Uh, I'm in this about a year right now, uh, but I'm here to talk to you guys about uh, potentially just, again, some feedback about the product, about the brand, and even the viability from an investment standpoint as I'm going out in the spring to secure a seed round funding uh, in the spring to kind of launch a 12 to 14 month sprint. Uh, but, so again, a little bit about me. But before we go forward, let's look back. So I want to do an exercise with you. Think about the last time that you went on a trip, whether it's a business trip or vacation. You booked your flight, you booked your hotel, and then what? Well, if you're like me and in my career and in my life, you probably started visiting a bunch of these websites. So the ratings and reviews websites, the uh, online travel agents, the travel guides, the editorials and blogs, and even reaching out to your social network, all looking for the best things to do and the best places to go, right? And it turns out that you're not alone. The average traveler, according to Nielsen Research, spends 53 days on 28 different websites on 76 different online sessions looking for the best recommendations and things to do. And that's ludicrous, right? And why is that? First of all, there's way too much information. It's the content wars right now. So everybody's producing content at a record rate. You're not sure who to trust. So who's writing these blogs? What are their motivations? Who was paid to say what? Information is stale and out of date. So by the time, <coughs> cities are changing so often that by the time a travel guide goes to print, it's already obsolete. And finally, sorry, I have a little clicker issue here sometimes. Uh, it's not relevant to you. So no one asked you about you or the type of trip you're taking before shoving recommendations in your face, right? And so my mission from the start has always been this. I'm going to create a travel recommendations product with really high quality content in an authentic environment. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that to travel brands and try and sell it to them or market it to them as something that they should use. So I started doing the research. I started finding that there are actually a lot of companies out there that have some really good funding that I'm trying to, I'm trying to be like right here, joining this list right here, uh, and five companies, but they all have critical flaws. They're all travel apps that kind of preach the same thing and offer the same services, quote unquote, but they have critical flaws in that they're either one of two things. They just aggregate social feeds, they just they call themselves inspiration feeds, if you will, or they actually try and do make relevant recommendations, but they scale too far too fast, and they actually can't scale, and they can't keep up the content, so it all becomes junk. And so what I wanted to do is create a product based around this principle, and that the legend on the map doesn't tell you what to do, it tells you how to find what you're looking for. And that's the basis by which the app's going to work. And it does work, actually. Uh, so think TripAdvisor meets Match.com, okay? First, you pick your destination, you answer a few quick questions about yourself and the type of trip that you're taking, and then voila, or boom. You're matched up with a local who's providing you their recommendations on restaurants, bars, and nightlife, things to do, and what we call things to know. So inside the app, you get a guide profile so you can learn more about them. You can see their social profiles. You get their recommendations. So it's at least eight to 10 recommendations in each category and a personal note from each of them about that uh, recommendation. You get audio introductions. So I actually record and produce these little mini clips that are about two to three minutes so you can learn about that guide, create that context, create that relationship. And finally, you can match and then you can repeat. So you can have two or three guides kind of pointing you and giving you recommendations as well. So what did the Legend app do for you? It saves you time, gives you confidence, and it makes travel human again. Uh, so again, in an industry where everything's going towards artificial intelligence, going to metadata, going to, going to scraping your uh, information to provide the best guesses, we're actually creating a one-on-one, -on -one, very authentic, very unique travel experience. And here's how we launched. I go out to each city and I find 20 to 30 guides from all walks of life, uh, age ranges, professions, you name it. And what I do is I actually get this content form for a very small fee, and then I package this content, put it inside the app, and I actually turn them into our brand ambassadors when we launch. So that basically means that I don't do much of the talking, I actually have the guides do the talking for me, all again creating that kind of grassroots approach. Our target market is 24 to 42 year olds who are social media power users. They're the people that
that were the first ones to you know sleep in an Airbnb and their friends say like that is the dumbest idea you've ever got. Why would you sleep with a stranger? Those are the people that I'm looking for. The people who are okay with industry breakers. Looking back over the 12 months review, uh, so again, I've been in about a year now. Uh, I left my job in January 2019 at the angst of my wife, uh, but then I basically built this product over the spring, and then I've been launching in a city pretty much about one per month, uh, and I plan to launch in five more cities. So uh, right now I'm launched in Charleston, Asheville, Savannah, Nashville, and Chicago, and plans to expand westward. The reason I'm here again today is I'm actually starting the process of looking for an investment, a seed round of about $300,000 to do four main deliverables over a 12-month sprint. That's to build, uh, deliver the second generation of the application, scalable operations, so I'm trying to figure out the process by which I can scale as possible or quick as possible with help of the product. Uh, I'm also looking to get 200,000 users on the platform and really collect a lot of good data so that I can show a travel brand that this is something that you not only want to build loyalty, but to actually gain some really actionable data and some insight. And the goal is eventually sell to one of these travel brands over the next 20, 12 to 14 months or get a major, a major investment or an acquisition from them. And the sell is this. This is a loyalty tool. This is actually a better way and a more cost-effective way to produce content than what you're currently doing in your content marketing strategy. So it costs $400 to $500 to write a blog. It actually costs $100 for us to create you know, the legend guide and get actually a really unique perspective. So for the same price, we can actually get five in terms of content quality, five different blocks for that same price. Secondly, we're building a better engagement. So everything is about engagement. So that's their content marketing strategy. All the travel brands aren't necessarily worried about conversions for their online strategy. It's about content marketing. So this is a better way to do that. And uh, it looks like I got the ringer. So here's the last slide. Uh, and here are the key buyers and investors. Everything from the airlines, the hotels, the online travel agents. These are all people who actually are making efforts in the content marketing strategy and in this play, but we're gonna do it more effectively. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you guys. With that, we're going to open it up to questions. But the first thing that I uh, kind of want to get from you is what would be your main asks of the group here today? What is it that you hope to accomplish through the interaction in this QA? Yeah. Other than, am I insane? Uh, <laughs> uh, I think the, the biggest thing I'm looking for is does, does the product make sense? Um, does, do, do you feel like I'm addressing a, a very critical need that you guys have seen if you're travelers? Uh, but finally, and more importantly, just on the investment side, um, since I'm not a, gener a revenue generating company and I have a product, I'm actually building this as a loyalty tool that I'm going to sell in 12 to 14 months. So I'm foregoing revenue. And I know that scares the ever living bejesus out of most investors. Um, but this is kind of an, uh, you know, what I'm looking for is you know, how do I get around that? How do I get around the fact that I'm not going to generate revenue, but I need to tell a compelling story that there's an end and we're going to sell for more than you put in? Make sense? Patrick, how, how, why should we use the app as opposed to just going to the experiences on the Airbnb? <coughs> sure. They're all local, similar advice, yeah. et cetera. And if I'm going to book an Airbnb, you can get them for a small fee, whatever. Yep. How do you distinguish yourself? From that? Absolutely. Um, but you can hear me right. Uh, so for Airbnb, they, she talked about experiences, which was an unbelievable, um, astute observation. So the first one is experiences are very much immersive. They require you to be there. They require you to want to be with that host. Where some people like, but if I'm on a work trip, I don't really want to talk to anybody. I kind of want to do the museums by myself on my own pace, and I want to find out which ones I should and shouldn't go to. Uh, so I think of them more as kind of like in that like tour guide type of realm. Uh, but the great thing about Airbnb actually is they're making a small attempt at something like this, which is they give their host the ability to give their recommendations and put their top picks inside their profile. But what it doesn't have is that screening capability. So I sometimes stay with hosts that are, you know, uh, I'd say 21 year olds who sleep on, you know, like who I, I stay in their extra, you know, guest room to, you know, grandparents who are renting out their extra, you know, house with what they call it, the frog, the family room above the garage. Um, so there's not that relevancy that I'm looking for. And that's what I'm trying to do is every company has a strategy, but they, they don't really tackle it all four at the same time, which is honesty, accuracy, relevancy, and digestibility. So I think they all miss it sometimes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as I mentioned, I ship out the content for $100. So what I tell them is, listen, it's $100. It's going to take about an hour of your time, maybe an hour and a half. And what I do is I basically, <laughs> over that time, it's a process that's not scalable at the start, but I'm doing it right now, which is I'm really focusing on maintaining those relationships, almost to the point where I call them friends. Um, I really want them to know me, feel like that when I ask them I, every quarter, hey, what's a good new recommendation that you can throw my way, they'll send it right back to me. And that's been the case so far. So I have 123 guys uh, on the platform right now, and I get regular updates without even having to ask them. Uh, but the idea is I usually just buy them their coffee that day. I uh, send them via Starbucks a $5 little gift card, and I say, great, you know, thanks for the, you know. So the maintenance of that data is really not bad in terms of getting the guys to provide it. It's actually more on the data maintenance. So when a restaurant closes, when a, you know, something changes, when something fundamentally changes. And so what I'm doing is building a Google API for Google Places where it actually will notify me when something's permanently closed or if something has major category changes. So are you essentially uh, setting yourself up to be an aqua hire? Is that really what exactly. you're trying to do? That would be, I mean, dream scenario, aqua hire, but if it's an acquisition and they can do it better than me, that's great. So who are the surviving travel agent companies that are struggling with all these other applications and things that you mentioned sure. and didn't mention them? Those, to me, would probably be your best bet to approach to see if this allows them to leapfrog or at least keep pace with yeah. all of these other disruptive technologies and bring the human aspect of what a travel agent used to do right. back to it. Absolutely. Um, so, and, and, and I think it'd probably be helpful if you also handle this in a way that you can see like every other search you're ever going to get online is touristy. Yeah. What do tourists want to do? When I go to another city, I never want to go see what tourists want to do. Right. I lived in New York forever. I, you know, you know, I never went to the Statue of Liberty. I went to the Empire State Building when I had meetings. I didn't go to the top. So it's like, yep. when I go to Paris, I don't want to go see the Eiffel Tower. Right. I want to go see all the stuff that nobody else would discover unless you were native. So yep. I think that would be another thing that you might want to bring out in this. Yeah, this absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I think um, for me, it, the marketing and the brand has always been everything that everybody else tells you is, is for a reason, is for a profit, is for a motive. That's not just. Us, like we're staying out of it and creating one-on-one -on -one connections with you and a local, and that's the most important thing. Is that you know travel blogs and editorials they'll write you know the best the, the way to spend 36 hours in a certain place, and that might be your favorite magazine. So you feel like okay, like I, I can trust this, but at the same time, they probably didn't get that from a local. They probably got that from somebody who works at the magazine who went there and spent 36 hours who got their information from TripAdvisor. You know, so it's kind of a junk in, junk out, and I want to say the S word, but. I'll, I'll do, you know, jump towards the junk out. Uh, so that's kind of the idea, you know, but spot on. In terms of the travel agencies, I think, you know, what I'm looking for is first the companies that have made the attempts at providing a service like this, just kind of showing them like, hey, this is a better way to do it, hopefully, and then we have some momentum, and then just working our way down, and then uh, I think travel agents are a spectacular recommendation. Thank you. <coughs> um, so you, you talked about, you know, paying for content, sure. expanding that out. Um, can you talk about just um, sort of the editorial process um, of that, scalability of that, and I guess in the framework of quality control of the content for lack of better term? Yeah, absolutely. So um, in terms of the process, um, right now what I do is the guides, I recruit them via Instagram or via um, you know, networks. So once I have guides, I actually just use their networks and kind of build that way. Uh, but the actual process is pretty simple. So I have an automated workflow via email sends them a link to fill out an online form. They fill out the online form. That takes them about 45 an hour. Uh, once that comes in, I get to review it. I can mass upload it straight into the system once it's approved, or I actually am kind of a control freak and I gotta get rid of this, but I actually <laughs> massage the content a little bit to make sure it's kind of up to quality, uh, spell check and things like that. And then I can mass upload it in there, uh, you know, right into the system, it's kind of available. Uh, in terms of the, you know, Maintenance of that data, just like I mentioned, kind of what I'm focused on building right now is all those APIs, those integrations that flag or alert why this might be out of date. Um, so if somebody, for instance, recommends a bar and they undergo new ownership, I want to know that because I need to reach out to that guy either via email, via an automated workflow, or what have you, to say, is that still good, yes or no, and if not, you know, shoot back your new recommendation. Uh, 
Um, so in terms of the operations, I think there's a lot of power in terms of using the APIs of Google Places, um, in terms of using the guides themselves. And what I'm trying to essentially avoid is just letting everything kind of update itself uh, because in terms of the guides you know, and, and having them managed. And that's where some of the other travel apps have failed. They just give any guide the opportunity to create a, uh, you know, their recommendations list and then they don't do any kind of maintenance. So I have a couple of questions. Um, the first one is um, the, the expectation around having a guide. So what I've heard you describe is that a guide is a person who gives you a piece of content and that you're working with them to maintain this currency. Sure. But as a traveler, if you introduce me to somebody that's a guide and you say it's uh, TripAdvisor meets Match.com, right. I think there may be an expectation that I'm going to actually have a live interaction with the yeah. guide. So I'd be interested to hear that. And the other piece is that you talked about, your primary question is, hey, from a, from a acquisition standpoint, is this viable? But we don't really know how we're going to make money. So the question that I have around that is, when you think about what a traveler is worth, like they have to be worth something. If they, everybody cares about conversions, yep. right? At some point in the funnel, they care about conversion. So the people that are going to acquire you, how much do they think each one of those pairs of eyeballs is worth, either in how much it costs to make content for that person or how much they're going to spend? And yep. that model is infinitely <coughs> You, you can you can create a model for that easily. Yeah. So I think you need to answer that question: Is what's a traveler worth to somebody, so that you can determine what evaluation? Got it. So more or less on the costing side, uh, this is what it costs you to create content. More about kind of the value. Whatever's of. more important to the people you're trying to sell. To. Right. 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 Um, and what was the first question? I'm sorry. It's about the expectation. Oh, the matching and the trip by the match. Yeah. So this is the MVP that we have right now that is live on the App Store and Google Play. Uh, and right now the idea is for a guide, I'm trying to convince them to get on board and say, listen, you're just going to help me create content. We're going to show your show, show your social profiles, get you some exposure, but really kind of that's it. I want it to seem very approachable, very much like, hey, we're just creating content here. On the user side, I want it to feel very special, very human, and almost like you are kind of matching with somebody because you can see their face, you can hear their voice, and you get their recommendations. And so that's kind of where we are having some gray area for a good reason, in that I might eventually expand this so that you can connect to the guy. You can send them a message in a controlled environment where you're not blowing them up on via text at two in the morning, you know, where's the post for? Um, so what I'm trying to do is kind of figure that out the next generation is, how do I increase that connectivity so that we are creating these connections more and more uh, without making the guides seem like they're signing themselves up for a dating group. Two additional questions. So are you thinking about infusing this also with cultural advice elements so that, for example, if and when you decide to expand overseas, you're traveling to Egypt for the first time or wherever, right, to be able to have some of the cultural Absolutely. Uh, wildly important. Uh, so the first question, uh, we have a things to know category. And that is basically their local tip. So here's the best way to get around. Here are some tips and tricks to help you navigate a little bit better. Here are some cultural norms that are, don't exist. It's getting there. So if you go to Chicago, people always tell you to put ketchup on your hot dog and get punched in the face. That is a cultural norm that you should know. You know? Uh, but especially when you go abroad, that is something that absolutely is going to be part of. Second is kind of in parallel with whether you're going to um, meet in person with the guy. What if there were 10 of us who happened to be using the platform and we're all in Chicago at the same time, but we're on business, but it would be kind of nice. It's like, oh, well, you know, I could go to this bar by myself, but wouldn't it be nice if there were others? So is there a thought to allow people to connect within the app if they are on the Absolutely. Sense? Yeah, I think um, early sketches are not really uh, that nice, <laughs> but the idea is it's all going to be opt-in, and so once somebody does opt-in, why not? I mean, why not connect them to if the guide also opts in to be you know, message for contact with, absolutely. So we want to, we're also looking in the second generation of this product, how do we make this much more shareable, much more, I, don't, I hate the term viral, but how much more viral and how much more shareable can we make this so that when somebody does have a good experience, they're posting about it and or connecting with more people and generating that community. So 
early stages of that conversation, but that's absolutely. Uh, I got one quick question, uh, Patrick, and we're going to go to you as the last question here. Um, now, your early dis your description of the early guide model has you paying in Starbucks gift cards and you know, creating a personal relationship between you and the guide. Uh, how would you envision that transitioning with an acquisition? and having that new company keep that relationship that you personally built with those guides and then expand on that? Yeah, um, so right now, I I know that the way I'm not doing it is scalable, but it's, the, I don't wanna call it the best way, but it's the, it's the way I know that I can make, make it work from the start. Uh, the goal is to eventually take it so that I'm paying them right now $100 and trying to become their friend and moving that down to $0 and having it be almost a privilege and a spot that they just wanted by travel bloggers and people who are local who want to be influencers and that we are in 25 cities let's say we, we, we only allow 30 guides in so I don't want it to be 60 guides I just can't manage that at the moment but what I want to do is then actually cap it and say these are 30 or 25 coveted spots uh, that you are going to get your target market attracted to you or essentially you know shown your profile that's going to give you followers it's going to give make you an authority in the local space and so that's the idea is I want to transition that to I'm trying to ask people to kind of come on the platform as guides to this is being a sought after spot that eventually will again scale in terms of being able to select them, being able to just kind of maintain more of that relationship. Uh, I'd love it if you know a Southwest or an away travel luggage could say you can get a $2,250 gift card uh, if you're accepted as a guide or you get a free away travel luggage if you're accepted as a guide. That's, that's the shift that I'm going to have to make over the next year and year. So you talked a bit about the acquisition of the guides, but what about user acquisition and the traction you're receiving from the five cities you've launched in? Perfect question. Uh, so uh, everything has been completely organic. I've done really no digital marketing efforts, so we have about 2,500 users on the platform right now. Uh, so nothing wild, but in terms of organic and grassroots, pretty decent. Uh, what we've done is just done, I'd say, 50 different tests of all, you know, $50 tests on Google Ads, on Brandzuka, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. We're covering all the bases, and basically every single metric that we're performing in right now, we're performing above industry average, either at one and a half times X, all the way up to on Google Ads, we're trending at four X, the industry average, in terms of click-through rate, in terms of uh, cost per click. Um, we have that dialed in. What I want to do is not use my first child fund to <laughs> expand, and I want to use the seed investment to, to act on that data, but we have a very compelling case in terms of the the engagement that we get from all of our paid campaigns as well as our grassroots stuff. Uh, earned media is a lot too, as well. Uh, so whenever we launch, we make sure to try and get some kind of earned media spot. Um, that is just a quick way for 300 extra users right on the platform, that's it. All right. Thank you Thank so you much, Chris. I really appreciate it. Okay. And as is our tradition, consider yourself mugged. Sweet. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Uh, we're gonna take a little break while we set up for the second presenter. Coffee is here, please go get some. And since it's in the same room, I'm gonna take advantage of this time and talk.